up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 hyundai sonata courtesy of freisinger hyundai in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i am reviewing this one today because yes i do own a sonata i own a 2020 sonata so same generation as this particular one i am in today and there are actually several nice upgrades for the 2022 Sonata. Of course, I will go over them for you guys in this video. Of course, you got America's Best Warranty with this one as well, being five-year, 60,000-mile bumper-to-bumper, 10-year, 100,000 miles on the powertrain. You got three years of free complimentary maintenance, meaning you don't have to pay for the oil changes, tire rotations, things like that for the first three years of ownership. That is wonderful. And so again, I will be testing out and going over everything about this one today from acceleration to braking, ride quality, steering feel, exhaust clip, sound system, all of that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2022 Sonata. First one being the SE, starting at $24,150, which by the way, is a modest $250 bump from the 2021 model year. And by the way, that is the trim level that we have today as well, the SE trim. Then there is the SEL for $25,950, SEL Plus, which is the one I own for $31,150, and line for $33,450, and lastly, the Limited, starting at $34,100. But then when it comes to the power plan, as you can imagine with all those trim levels, there are actually a few different options for that then as well. First one is going to belong to the SE trim that we have today and the SEL. This one is going to be a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 191 horsepower at 6,100 RPM, 181 pound feet of torque coming in at 4,000 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels through an eight speed automatic, zero to 60 time for that particular engine configuration, coming in at 7.8 seconds with MPG numbers coming in at 28 in the city, 38 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel. So then that next engine configuration is going to belong to the SEL Plus that I personally own and the limited trim. That is a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 180 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 195 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,500 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels yet again through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters for that one. Zero to 60 times 7.2 seconds with that configuration. Top speed 100 141 miles per hour with MPG numbers coming in at 27 in the city, 37 on the highway. And believe it or not, I got 42 miles per gallon on the highway on my trip to Mechanicsburg here, about 20 mile drive. So that is pretty darn impressive actually. But anyways, regular unleaded fuel yet again. But then lastly, the end line trim level is going to be a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 290 horsepower, 5,800 RPM, 311 pound feet of torque coming in right around 1,600 RPM. Power sent to the front wheels through an eight speed wet dual clutch with paddle shifters. Yes, this is the fun one, you guys. Zero to 60 time in 5.2 seconds. MPG numbers 23 in the city, 33 on the highway. Kind of impressive for the power numbers, but once again, taking regular unleaded fuel. Go figure. But anyways, before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here, in our Sonata, I did want to mention the drive modes. That drive mode toggle switch is located directly behind the shift buttons. And yes, there is not a traditional shifter in the Sonata. They are shift buttons. So you got P for park, R for reverse, and for neutral, D for drive, in case anybody was unfamiliar with that. And just behind that, again, you have the driving modes and you will get to choose from normal, sport, smart, and custom. And with the end line, you actually get sport plus as well, but ultimately they will adjust things like the shift points, throttle response, and the steering sensitivity. And so actually, Actually, I typically leave it in the custom driving mode on my own personal Sonata because what I do is I make the steering feel a bit heavier, but I don't want that instant acceleration 24 seven. So that's what I do with the custom driving mode in case anybody was curious. But now having got all of that out of the way, you guys, what do you say? Let's go ahead and find a straight away. Let's put this thing to the test here and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 Sonata here up to speed. All right, you guys, so we got it in sport mode here in three, two, one spinning <laughs> I got 
gotta be honest, I feel like the uh, the turbocharged engine, the 1.6 liter turbocharged, is definitely quicker. That is the one I personally own. But having said that, we still spun there in first gear, so plenty of power in the Sonata without a doubt. The end line, I've reviewed that one last year, that one is ridiculous. Like, sick amount of power at any given time, even on the highway. But definitely, even in this one, no issues with merging onto the highway whatsoever. Plenty of an acceleration without a doubt for the Sonata. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 11.2 inch solid rear discs. Did wanna also mention though, the end line, again, the performance edition here, is going to bump that brake setup up to 13.6 inches in the front, 12.8 inches then in the back. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it's gonna come in at 121 feet for the non end line trim, and then 110 feet for that end line. As far as the braking feel goes, it's one of the things I love about my Sonata. It's definitely on the front firmer side. It instantly brings you to a stop, not quite as good as my 2019 Mustang GT, which had a 60 to zero stopping distance of 99 feet, which is like the best ever, but still incredible braking feel. I got to be honest with the Sonata for what the vehicle is. It does really instantly brings you to a stop. It's not a soft braking feel whatsoever. And that's a good thing in my book. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front end rear stabilizer bars. As far as the ride quality goes now this is one where i think the se has my sel plus beat because this one comes with smaller wheels larger tires and we'll get more into the exterior here in just a little bit but because of that because I have larger wheels on my SEL Plus. I do feel like the ride quality is a bit more soft, a bit more plush here in the SE trim level. So it's definitely absorbing Pennsylvania's road imperfections very nicely, believe it or not, here in our SE trim. So I actually absolutely love that. And as far as that steering feel goes, I will say it is a pretty noticeable difference between the different driving modes, like I was telling you guys earlier. That's why I personally leave it in that custom driving mode because I still got it in sport right now. It is a much heavier your steering feel than if I were to take it out of that sport driving mode. When it's out of that sport driving mode, I gotta say it is a loosey goosey steering feel, which I am not a fan of whatsoever. Actually, it kind of drives me nuts how loose that steering feel is. But again, you can fix that. And I do fix that in mine. And because of that heavier steering feel that you can put it on, I've had absolutely no issues with that. I actually really like the steering feel in the Sonata because of that. Anyways, as far as cabin noise goes, that is pretty good. I will say there's acoustic laminated front glass for all trim levels. If you were to go with the SEL trim level and up, you're also going to get acoustic front door glass as well. And that's kind of one thing that Hyundai has been known for. I will say I'm going like 20 miles per hour right now, so I'm going super slow. But I will say at higher speeds, when you're on the highway at like 65 miles per hour plus, there is a bit of wind noise that comes into the cabin from the driver's side. And that's typically a Hyundai thing. I noticed that in the Palisade as well, and it is something Hyundai is known for. Hopefully they're fixing it here in the future, but you get a little bit of wind noise. So if there was one room for improvement, I would say that Hyundai could do with the Sonata, with the Palisade and some of its other vehicles, I would say the cabin noise. But anyways, then touching on visibility, this is a sedan. So you are going to have absolutely no issues whatsoever when it comes to visibility. I can see perfectly fine out the back. Did would also mention though, if you were to go with that limited trim level, you will also get a head up display projecting your speed as well as the speed limit of any given road and safety features up on your windshield to better help you keep your eyes on the road. So that is a big deal for visibility as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Hyundai Sonata. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Hyundai Sonata finished in Portofino gray. Definitely a very nice color choice, actually. I don't mind that. It looks really good on this Sonata. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front. And actually, let me start with one of the new changes for the 2022 model year. For the N-Line trim specifically, there are now Night Edition cosmetics available. That is one of the changes. Slight change. Don't, of course, have the N-Line, so I can't show it to you guys, but that is one of them. But anyways, front bumper and the front grille is actually going to differ amongst the trim levels. For example, the SE and SEL trim levels are going to look the same up front with that chrome horizontal horizontal bar across the front grille. That is probably the most significant feature for those two trim levels. And then if you were to go with the SEL Plus or limited trims, you are going to find some more gloss black accents, including a gloss black front lip up front. And then if you were to go with the end line, you're going to find a body colored front lip and it's gonna look a lot lower as well. So 
definitely a lot of changes dependent upon the trim level that you go with up front at least. But I will say, LED headlights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. I love that little better illumination at night there. Automatic feature with them, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. Then of course, one of my favorite features for all Sonatas is the LED daytime running lights. Essentially the way those work is they actually fade onto the hood so they're a little brighter towards the bottom and then as they go up the hood they slowly fade out no other vehicles out there right now have anything close to like that so i love that it's different i love that it's unique and like nothing else on the road one of the reasons i got my own personal sonata full led headlights though i did want to mention that come with the limited and the end line that is pretty cool you can find front air curtains down to the corners there helping direct air around the wheel and tire combination for a little better aerodynamics for all trim levels and if you were to go with the end line of course you will find some end line badging within that front grille then as well but overall very nice looking front end let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the sonata all right and so now since we are around to the side of this one chrome window surrounds come standard on all trim levels but the end line which is where you're actually going to get gloss black window surrounds body colored satin chrome door handles coming standard on all trim levels body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels but you will get gloss black side mirrors for the end line so i did want to mention that heated side mirrors with led integrated turret signals coming with the sel trim level and up so i can't show that to you guys unfortunately today taking a look down at the wheel configuration 16 inch alloy wheels coming with the se that is one of the things i was mentioning to you guys during the drive that is probably why this thing rode a little bit smoother than i'm used to because if you jump up to the sel you get 17 inch alloys the sel plus and n line that's my current configuration you get 19 inch alloy so substantially larger wheel configuration there then if you were to go with the limited you do get 18 inch alloys then as well so really different wheel configuration is dependent upon which particular trim level that you go with but overall a very nice fast back type appearance towards the back end towards the c pillar love that look but that about rounds out the side of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around back body colored shark fin antenna all the way to the top there we'll say if you wanted a rear spoiler go with the end line that is going to give you a gloss black rear spoiler and that is the only trim level that will give you a rear spoiler led taillights coming standard across the board little better illumination there at night i love that center high mount stop lamp also coming standard on all trim levels gloss black rear diffuser coming with the sel trim level and up so therefore i can't show that to you guys we actually have that chrome horizontal bar which ties in pretty good with the front end i gotta say but still gloss black rear diffuser if you go with the sel trim level and up you will get a unique end line rear bumper for the end line trim level of course and just below it all there is a single exhaust outlet that will be hidden away for the se that we have today however if you were to go with the sel sel plus or limited trims you will get a single exhaust outlet with twin satin tips it is a pretty cool look i will say that is what i currently have on my own sonata and then dual twin tips if you were to go with the n line but anyways having got all of that out of the way i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around back of the Sonata, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there of course are several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a hidden button within the upper portion of the Hyundai logo. That is the coolest 007 way to go ahead and open the trunk. That is pretty cool. Also a button on the key fob, of course, and there is a button by the driver's side left knee then as well. But once opened off, cargo capacity comes in at 16 cubic feet, which is actually a pretty decent amount. But if that was not enough space for you, there is a 60-40 split for all trim levels, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it did want to also mention in that cargo area you will find cargo lighting of course and if you were to look up underneath of the cargo floor you will find a spare tire under there as opposed to the fix a flat in case anybody was curious about that but then making our way up to the rear leg room that comes in at 34.8 inches so for reference i am even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the rear seats there rear center armrest with cup holders is going to come on the sel trim level and up can't show that to you guys today SEL Plus is going to give you rear ventilation for those rear passengers and SEL Plus and up is also going to give you a rear charging port back there as well. So really 
SEL Plus is where you wanna be for the rear passengers, I would say, my personal opinion. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way up to the front seats here. Manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the S trim level that we have today. Eight-way power driver's seat with the SEL trim level and up. Heated front seats with the SEL trim level and up. SEL Plus is going to add a leatherette, dynamica, suede combination. I personally love that combination. That is what I have in my Sonata. Leather seating is going to come with the limited Napa leather, dynamica, suede combination coming with the N-line trim level, but that limited is also going to give you ventilated front seats and a six-way power adjustable passenger seat then as well. Those two things you actually can't get in the N-line, so I wanted to mention that but overall even in our se trim level here we have today the seating is plenty comfortable i've had absolutely no issues with the seat comfort so definitely could see myself taking a long road trip in the sonata as i already have but anyways let's now go ahead and make our way to the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for the sel plus trim level and up otherwise you get a urethane steering wheel which is currently what you're looking at right now heated steering wheel then is going to come with a limited trim level only but then making our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock and that button to pop the rear hatch but i did want to say it is a push button start with the sel trim level and up so we do have the typical turnkey ignition with us today with our se trim which isn't bad it's a little old school but it's not bad hyundai digital key is going to come with the sel plus trim level and up i personally love that you download the hyundai app and then you can actually use your phone to get in and out of your vehicle and then you set it on the wireless phone charger and then you can hit the engine start button that's how you're going to start it up so that is a pretty dang cool feature if you don't like carrying around keys i love that but anyways all I'm going to do here since we have the SE is simply put my foot in the brake and turn the key. But then once started up, when it comes to the gauges, you will get a traditional analog gauge cluster if you were to go with the SE, SEL, or SEL plus trim levels. However, there is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster with the N-Line and Limited, which is going to be optional on the SEL and SEL plus. I have that digital gauge cluster it is one of the main reasons I went with the Sonata it is one of the best digital gauge clusters out there. It changes colors when you change the driving mode. It does this little explosion graphic. I absolutely love it. But since we don't have that today, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a small digital display front and center to control what is on that small digital display. There are steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel, giving you things like your average miles per gallon, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, when you need your next oil change, tire pressure information the list goes on pretty much everything you could possibly want up on that digital portion of the gauges there but then making our way to overall interior quality and let me start with one of the new features yet again for the 2022 sonata panoramic sunroof is now going to come with the sel plus trim level and up previously you needed a tech package for this sunroof if you were to go with that sel plus that is why i don't have it in my sel plus but now you're going to get it standard with the 2022 so that is pretty cool but we don't have it today though anyways led interior lighting coming with the n-line trim level and limited auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls with the sel plus trim level and up dual zoom climate control with the sel trim level and up wireless phone charger with the sel plus trim level and up aluminum sport pedals for the n-line and of course 64 colors of ambient lighting for the n-line and limited i love that don't have it again here today but that is pretty darn cool but overall as far as the interior quality goes i love the silver trim found on the doors that continues on just above the passenger side glove box and right below the infotainment screen i think that looks pretty darn good i love the gloss black accents right around the climate control buttons and by the way these climate control buttons this is a specific setup to the se if you were to go with the sel trim level and up you're actually going to get a digital setup for that climate control which is going to give you dual zone climate control and also reach whatever particular temperature that you set it to so that is is pretty darn cool just below that you're going to find a decent amount of rubberized storage unless you go with the sel plus and then you're going to get a wireless phone charger just in front of that dual usb charging ports 12 volt power outlet i love all the gloss black finishes around the shift buttons and just to the right of that you have dual cup holders with a little slot to insert your cell phone if you wanted to and within the center armrest there is a decent amount of storage within that as well so absolutely no issues there but overall i will say there are a lot more high quality finishes the higher up in the trim levels that you go for example on the doors here you do find a lot of hard plastics here in our se trim level but that can change to leather if you go with the limited or leatherette finish if you go with the sel plus trim level i know so it is going to change pretty substantially dependent upon the trim level
level that you go with. The higher the trim level, the better you're gonna get. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen here. Eight inch color touchscreen display coming with the SE, SEL, and SEL Plus. 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display then coming with the N line and limited. Either way, you get Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, so you gotta love that. Every single trim level is gonna get that, meaning you have free navigation displayed up on the infotainment screen, as long as you have a smartphone, I should say. Bluetooth and audio streaming also coming standard. Factory navigation system coming with the N-Line and limited, although you really don't need it with Android Auto, Apple CarPlay after all. Climate control settings you can check out up there as well. There's a voice memo system where you can record your own voice and then play it back at a later date so you don't forget something. That is pretty cool. And one of my favorite things to mention on the Sonata is with the 10 and a quarter inch screen, you have sounds of nature. So you can play like walking in the forest or snow village or things like that. Open air cafe, I think is another one. So that's a pretty cool feature, but you can also check out your radio information up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems, you will get six speakers for the SE, SEL and SEL plus. And then a 12 speaker Bose sound system if you were to go with the N line or limited. So we actually don't have the Bose, of course. We do have the six speaker sound system. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. actually don't mind it honestly for a six speaker sound system it is pretty dang good i will say that that's what i have so it's really not all that bad of course the bose sound system is going to be better obviously if you like music go with that one but it's really not all that bad for a six speaker sound system i've tested plenty of them in my day trust me but anyways last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put this one in reverse you will of course find a rear view camera coming standard across the board then if you were to go with the limited you will also get a surround view monitor giving you a bird's eye view of everything around the vehicle but as always that is going to lead us into safety and so to start the sonata is an iihs top safety pick which pretty much says it all right there front side sidecar and airbags do come standard there is a driver's knee airbag up front as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system but also standard for every single trim level across the board will be forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane keep assist, lane following assist, driver attention warning, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, parking collision avoidance assist, and rear occupant alert then as well. And then if you were to go with the SEL trim level and up, that is going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and safe exit warning. And then if you were to go with the N-Line or Limited, you will also get a blind view monitor and highway drive assist. The blind view monitor is displaying what is in your blind spot up on the digital portion of the gauges in case anybody was curious. But overall, as far as my final thoughts here go of the Sonata, obviously I am a fan because I bought one after driving over 600 cars. I should say it all pretty much right there, but digital gauges are probably one of the main reasons. I absolutely love cars. I'm actually pretty big into tech as well. So the digital gauge has really won me over because it is a wonderful setup here in the Sonata. Ambient lighting, also a big fan of that. Adaptive cruise control system on the Sonata is absolutely wonderful. It will steer, it will brake, it will come to a complete stop and that will hit the gas and start going again once maybe it's a green light after it being a red light. It's a wonderful system on the Sonata. Of course, with all of that, you still have America's best warranty. So you do have the engine and the transmission and the drive shaft warrantied for 10 years or 100,000 miles. That is quite a long time. Also get three years of free maintenance, which means you don't really have to pay for anything for the first three years of ownership. That's also very nice. But overall, obviously, I am a fan. That's why I got one. I prefer the SEL Plus trim level because of all of the things I mentioned throughout the video. But if you guys have any questions about the Sonata, please put them in the comment section below. That is about it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on TikTok at the bottom of the screen there. If you wanted to see short clips of these vehicles before they actually get to YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button. If you're into new car reviews, that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.